Our next speaker for the day is Brother Mervyn Lewis. Uh, I'd like just to give him a brief on Brother Mervyn Lewis. He's been in the renewal since 40 plus years. I believe he was there from the time of Father Lucas, maybe even before that. He is from Mount Carmel's Church, Mumbai, and he's currently a National Service Team member. And not so much, the man speaks for himself. Good morning, everybody. It's still morning, no? Yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can smile at each other. With a person not smiling, you know how to get a smile, no? No? Give us but. Immediately all the smiles come out. Isn't it? I feel so good after hearing uh, Savio. We have been blessed to have uh, earlier Savio speaking to us about God's love. And uh, all the promise that is there, it feels so nice to hear about God's love. I am going to say something that will dampen your spirit. So it's good you had your coffee and you had all your breaks and all that. Because what I say is definitely going to make you feel. Uh, because if you see, we saw God loves you. We know He cares for you. All the plans He has for us. The way he has blessed us. But one quick glance at our lives, at our families, our neighborhoods, the situation around us shows that the picture is not so rosy after all. Am I right? Huh? There are difficulties, there are challenges, lots of tears, lots of silent burdens we carry. Okay? And I can see a nodding from all of you all, which means that you agree. We try to not and only I all of us go to the same thing. But even as I tell you I'm saying something to dampen your spirit, I can assure you one thing. At the end of one hour, or when I finish, whichever is later, because I might take some exam. There will be some hope for me and for you. For you and for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm happy because I come to a parish where you are a discerning people, you will understand, you know, you are struggling in your faith, you are living your faith. So there is much more resonance here. There is much more, uh, which I am sure that you will understand much more than what normal other congregations or audiences understand. Okay? So take a bow, all of you. Today also, we, there is a feast we celebrate. Do you know what feast? Not St. Paul's feast. The conversion of St. Paul. Okay? So you know he was going to Damascus and he he fell from Hoss. Huh? What color? Oh, sorry. This is not part of the talk. Huh? What I'm saying. So what color was a horse? Red, blue, green, yellow, rainbow, white, brown, black. Brown, brown. Okay. Okay. Now we're wasting my time, not your time. We just say the Bible just says he fell to the ground. They didn't say he was on a horse or he was on an elephant or on a tonga or a donkey. Nothing is said. He was traveling. He fell to the ground. Maybe he was on a palanquin, maybe he was a chariot, maybe he was a whatever. So read to the scripture. So when you study the word of God, you have to open your eyes and once again read all these things. Because we have been, you know, artists have always been giving us some of the, if not a horse galloping and then with a sword and, and nothing of that stuff. Okay? He was going to Damascus, he had this experience and the bright light and he was thrown to the ground. Okay, this is not part of today's uh, session. Let me uh, sing. 
go further with the what's up. So today, as you said, there are lots of questions in our minds. Why is this happening to me? Why is that happening? So, so many uh, calamities which happen. <coughs> and sometimes we ask, God, are you there? Isn't it? You know, why is this suffering happening? Why is it? Sometimes you find families. Okay? The father is an alcoholic and blah, 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 blah. One person is very sick. There's one to look after the children. And the same family will have to be faced with more calamities. Have you come up with these type of situations? It's unjust, injustice. I'm a lot, I mean, if you're there, really, are you listening to this talk? A lot, then why is this happening? We, we question, we question a lot. And now I want to introduce to you another person. In the first talk, who you want to introduce to? So only a few people came for the talk, the others will come. Who will who you introduce to in the first talk? Now I'm going to introduce to you one more person. Who do you think I'm going to introduce to you? Holy Spirit. Okay, very good. Wrong. Huh? God the Son. God the Son. Wrong. Satan. Ah! That is it. I am going to introduce to you Mr. Satan. Because he doesn't like to come in the front, he doesn't like to show himself, he's in the background. So I think it's high time we introduce him in church itself, you know, and let all his fellow brothers and sisters see who is his head. Is no, I'm just kidding. Hey, are you recording all this thing? Or? You can't say that. <laughs> I think it's time we come to the stage where we now expose, not introduce, but expose. Satan, his pomps, his works, his deceit. Because all this time, when we are having problems, when we are having difficulties, who can we turn to? I have nothing to do with this. I have nothing to do with this. The Lord, you did the right to the run and so many more candles, so many more novenas and all the saints, all the faces that come black with that smoke and we don't have candles. And they, say, they, they ask, why are you punishing us with your... So today, we need to look a little more and if I have helped you open your eyes a little more to the uh, evil design of Satan, I think my job is done. And so this talk is on sin and its consequences. What? Sin and its consequences. Now each one of you have been for numerous talks, numerous retreats, missions, and you have heard this same talk over and over again, isn't it? Hmm? And I, at such times, I only think, Lord, what more can I tell you that you do not already know? What have I said you know already know? Yes or no? So what more can I tell you? And so I can only remember this. How many of you are taking our notes? Good. So I'm going to give you all easy scripture passages. Okay? And easy chapters. Mark chapter 4. Mostly in each, all four chapters. The fourth chapter of different uh, lesson. So Mark chapter 4. There's a parable of the soul. What's the parable of the soul about? What do you learn from this parable? Hey, don't tell me because I think I'm wrong answers. The word of God. Sorry? So it's a secret. the word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is the benefit for us from all that? Good soil. Good soil. Good soil. Okay. Some other soil is there. So we know the parable of the soil and it was in this sea, a soil and stone and mud and path and birds come and this and that and all that. So what was the Bible telling us from that story? Nothing about that. The Bible is only telling us one thing, tells us about the love of God. And then God loves us. And if today you have been a rocky soil, if you, today you have been that path on which the seed fell, he is going to come again, season after season, season after season, till the time that your heart offers to the soil, the good soil, so that this seed will be planted. So today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Okay? If today you are hearing his voice, that means you have cleaned your ears also. Okay? So, the thing is about Satan. He so skillfully, so 
skillfully, he's deflected all the blame, he's done all the... I'm getting scared because of this... Uh, all the Kidagiri, you know Kidagiri is, no? Huh? That you understand Kidagiri? Huh? He's done all the charming, all that he has done. And today, we are not blaming Satan, we don't even consider Satan. But, Lord, why did you do this? Lord, why did you do that? So this is, and today I need to just speak about that. So today, even uh, Pope Pius VI, it was in 1946, he said, I said, well, he said that today the sin of the century, the sin of the century, not yours and mine, not only decade, of the century, he said, we have lost a sense of sin. We have lost the sense of sin that we are doing something wrong, we do not even consider that it is wrong. And how can we be lulled into this situation where we do so many wrong things? It's okay. This is who I am. You know, everybody does it. Nothing wrong about it. It's okay. No, I'm making only too much noise. Just tell Mummy, I'm the mummy daddy, I'm not the sense they've got. They are in company, Adlai Kai Macha. What? You know? They are not modern, they will be modern. So this is how we defend ourselves, this is how we go about it. I like to... Uh, I like to tell you a little experiment that was done. Scientific experiment. Don't do it, but you can do it. I'm sure you can do it if you want to, but don't do it. You take a vessel of normal water. What? Normal water. Put five live frogs in it. Now I'm not giving you a recipe. I'm not giving you a recipe. Put five what frogs? Live frogs in it. Slowly start heating the water. Slowly. What will happen? Jump out. They jump out. They won't jump in. They are already in. No, why? They will attack each other. They will attack. Still, your science student. The frog will not jump out. Your right sister. They will slowly, if heat the water slowly, not fast. Huh? If there's a sudden change in water, boom, they'll jump out. But if you heat it slowly, they're, they're cold at it. So they don't realize. Slowly, 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 and their legs are getting poked and they don't know it. Finally, when it's too hot for them, their limbs are already cold. And they cannot do anything. Sisters and brothers, this is our story. This is our story. We have been kept in our environment for so long that some of our senses or spiritual senses or sensibilities have been slowly cooked. And we have adapted, borrow your words, sister, we have adapted our words, well, ourselves so well, so well, that today we are very happy. We are very happy. And at least those frogs ultimately will die. But today I am not dead, but we are spiritually dying. Hello, are you with me? Yes. And so we go about, I remember one of this uh, famous theologian, he says, today, because of the secular world that we are in, those who are working in offices, those are, so you will be able to um, uh, comprehend what I am saying, understand. Those who are working in offices, you have in an office, imagine a big uh, room with about uh, 10 or 12 people. Uh, one is a Hindu, maybe two are Muslim, then a Jain, and Buddhist, and Christian, and Protestant, and all of that. All of us have the same ideas, same mentality. All of them work together, watch the same news, watch the same channels, watch entertain with the same thing, enjoy the same thing, the same meal, blah, 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 blah. Only thing on a public holiday, which is for example the Sunday, I go to a church and he goes to the masjid and he goes to the mandir and he goes to the center. 
you know, the labels change. But otherwise, in effect, we are all the same. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, we have all adapted beautifully. So, Christmas, I give some sweets. On Diwali, you give me some sweets. On Eid, I get that. Oh, that uh, ah, from us. Those things, they get a meeting. That was coming or not? And then they come in, he's the bell, and they wait. Oh, oh, you have come. But we wait. Top, 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 top. But that is who we are. Outside, the labels are different, but inside, we are the same. We have been cooked, all of us, in the values of this world. So, religiously, they were now saying, oh, what is this such a LSS. Uh, long and short of it, what? Ah, uh, life and sex. You all know that? Other some people, how many husbands and wives have pushed you? Huh? Oh, oh. Huh? Okay. Any youth here, parents have pushed you? So, no, you just come. But today, I, I have to stick to my topic is sin and its consequences, but I, I, I naturally gravitate to, you know, Jesus saying that in John 10, 10, I have come to give life and life with all its abundance. But it's not my topic, somebody else will talk about it. Okay? So, I was telling you this, that we have been cooked, I told you the example of the frogs, huh? we have been cooked into it. And then frogs, but we, we don't realize, we don't realize what our situation is. Is our situation good or bad? You can't hear? Is our situation good or bad? Hello? It's good because we don't realize we have been cooked. Or oh, it's bad because today we realize that that is what has happened to us. I want to give you a scripture verse from Proverbs 14 verse 12. Proverbs 14 verse 12. There is a way which seems right. There is a way which seems right to man. Can you complete it? But its end is a road to death. There is a way which seems right to man. But its end is the road to death. How many times they were trapped in those smokers or alcoholics or drug addicts or into pornography, into lesbianism, into homosexuality, into prostitution, into wife swapping, any number of things, any number of things, any number of things. They were sucked into all these things without realizing. And they told them this is a norm, this is a norm, they enjoy life, and you cannot do this. Isn't that the attitude that we have? And so slowly, sin has entered and got its tentacles. You know tentacles? The octopus has and gripped us. My in-laws have a place in Goa. A nice cottage mango, whatever you call it. And uh, my father decided that he wants to put a septic tank. So little from the house, a pit was being dug. And it's so mostly sandy soil, so it's easy, one or two people can come and do their job. But finally, about five to seven people were required to do their job. Why? Because hardly about two feet into the ground, there was a tree which is at your gate, you know, a big banyan tree. And the root was so fat, underneath there, and just to chop that root, that was my taka, taka, whole day and chai, pani, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Two to three days just to cut. They cut it here, cut it there, to take out that huge log, which was the root. And I'm saying, that tree is that far, and the roots are here. And on the surface, everything looked nice. You get the point? So how Satan and his put his tentacles around us, we do not know. And we don't realize because we are like those frogs in the hot water. Again, I'll give something about myself. Huh? Don't repeat it and don't gossip about it. In colleges, one person from uh, my, uh, uh, this in Bangalore who's here very much. Okay? So, if I say anything wrong, you're free to correct me. Okay? When I was in college, I had a double life. Everybody at home, when I stayed in Bangalore, knew that I'm a very good person. 
I was in the choir, I was in the liturgy, I was just about 16 or 17 years old. I was helping out with uh, uh, teaching slum kids. Okay? Oh, what was that? What a nice thing, singing hymns, carols, singing, da da da. In college, nobody would have believed that I'm doing any such thing. And at home, nobody would have believed I was doing what I was doing in college. In college, it was music with all the dirty, you know, dirty songs? Good. So it was all. So I was known in college, you know, that any party like Bhavanas would come and, you know, they'd come and sing all the dirty songs. For about two hours, non stop, not this ordinary thing we sing here. But really very, very good music. But they were dirty, vulgar songs. And I could abuse. Unlike people who abuse only Hindi, Manati, English. My abuse is only Persian and Swahili. You know, so not about color and all those things. But when I came to Bandar, not one word would slip out of my mouth. And when I went to college, nobody knew that I knew any of these things, holy things. But in college, for the masters and the priests and principals, we were all good friends. But nobody knew that I could do some other things. And then finally, through God's grace, I came to the prayer meeting. And the first thing that person said, Brother, don't worry, you know, your bandwagon is going to. I don't want to shop the bandwagon. I like him very much. No, 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 I don't want to. And because of that, I didn't want to go to prayer meeting because my bandwagon will go away. I like that. It's a nice part of my personality. And so, I just, because of pestering, 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 I said, come on, let me go and I went there, okay? And in the first meeting I went, I was totally changed. Not my bad person, but I changed my life. Because I was seeing people there, there was a room maybe this size, people sitting on the periphery of the room, there was no furniture, it was a very poor household, you know, there was a small three-legged table, uh, with one plastic vase, small little thing, with two plastic flowers in it. That was the only furniture in the room. And about 10 or 12 people sitting on the perimeter. And each one was like, Lord, I just thank you because you saved me. For two months I have not gone to the prostitutes. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for two weeks I have been dry. Dry means no alcohol. They are stopped drugs. They are shopping in one below. Standard among those boys, they you know, they work for two weeks and then they will say, I'm like, what happened? What happened? It's like a boss. That means the boss says we catch up for and back in that was those are the people. Uh, I come from the Bazaar area, so we have all those type of people. I was something like that, I was good. So coming back. So this person said, and then after two, two months, I was traveling with a friend of mine going to college. And I heard some of the junior, I finished my college over this. I heard some maybe first year students. Talking some language and say, don't describe my mind, don't just see what you're saying. So she said, well, what's happened? What's wrong? I said, can you listen to what you're saying? So you're quiet and she listens. What did you say? I said, it's better. But I'm going to say it to you. Try to raise me like that. She said, what's wrong with you? You're hundred times worse than that. It was only at that point, only at that point, my sisters and brothers, only then I realized Without any effort from me, without any, God took away all my bad language. I didn't do any effort, I'm telling you, as I said, I loved all that language. I loved it. I could speak it, I, mean, I wasn't like a big hero because I could speak in those Swahili and uh, Persian banners and uh, He took it away from me. And maybe after a few months, uh, for you know, like the safety, you know, I kept all the lyrics. I came across the lyrics, I took the lyrics, I don't want to say this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I just later on what will happen, the hope. I'm just telling you that this is what God can do to each one of us. The extent of the sin that is there in our lives, we are not aware of. I'm here to go. Uh, go for further. I just want to tell you, all of us get tempted. Is temptation a sin? No. No. Temptation is not a sin. What is a sin? When we succumb to that temptation, when we give into temptation. Okay? So, uh, there's a nice verse which is uh, from James. Okay? St. James is there to St. James, chapter 1, 
verse 13 to 15. Each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed. Enticed by his own desires. So, if you are a glut, you will be enticed only by food. No? Huh? If you are a sexual pervert, you will be enticed by what? Or pornography and all that type of thing. You understand? By your own desires will be. Then, when this desire conceives, when you have consented to it, that becomes sin. When sin is full grown, it becomes results in death. Okay? What about death is it? This? Not in the hospital and I see you know. Spiritual death. A separation from God. We don't realize it, but I will do today something. I'm going to give you a couple of principles which then you can sit and examine it yourself in whatever situation you're facing. Are you with me? Yes. If you're all you sleeping, put your hands up. <laughs> ah, what you said? I said all you're sleeping, put your hands up. Okay. So can we go forward? Temptation. Sin and temptation. Sin is not equal to temptation. You know that clear? Okay. When you you succumb to it when you consent to that system. Okay? How does temptation come to you? There are three ways temptation come to you. I thought, I told you say amen. Not that. So the three ways temptation comes to you. How is that? One is from your flesh. Now flesh means what I have to explain, huh? Flesh not beef, mutton, not that type of flesh. Flesh means fallen nature. Or fallen nature. This is a beautiful line, it's not in scripture. But it goes like this. It's not because we sin that we are sinners. It's not because we sin that we are sinners. It's because we are sinners, therefore we sin. Clear? Hello? It's not because we sin that we are sinners. Because we are sinners, therefore we sin. And because we are sinners, therefore we need help. Therefore we need a redeemer. Oh, that's the next thing. Hmm? But we are sinners. By nature we are sinners. So willpower is never a method to stop. I'm a smoker, I use willpower, I stop. One day the willpower will go and will start smoking. I'm an alcoholic, I'm a willpower. I'm just take a bottle and dangle it for me. Isn't it? How many of us who have had good... Uh, uh, what should I say? Good resolutions. I have slipped up when somebody, a friend of them has reinvited them once again. Isn't it? Okay? So, they took a pornography and blah, 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 all those type of things. So, the first thing is flesh. Okay? Another aspect of temptation comes to this, the world. Okay? Now, when you say world, what do you mean by world? First of all, the world we live in. So all the charms of the world, the glow, the enticements of the world that the world dangles before. For example, media. Media, media. You know, by the clean industry is available in other ways, available 15, 20,000, number 2,000. You don't depend on my rights, 2,000 rupees. Abroad, everybody knows that if you're dealing with the Indians, never mind what I just said, something is free. Well, every Indian person is going to get a lot of money, get a lot of money, get a lot of money. Standard. No Indian knows to say this is 100 rupees, but 92 may be there, nothing may be there, up which is not there. So everybody will put some daily rates from 100 and make it 150 rupees, then give one pair of socks of 10 rupees and you will be happily by the way because I got free. So that is Indian mentality. I am also Indian, don't worry. I also wait for it. Media. Media, the values of the world. Today there are so many philosophies in this world which are going around, which slowly are cooking us. Which slowly we are adapting to the philosophies of this world. One is secularism. You know what secularism is? Yes or no? We know we want India to be a secular country. Right? Secular means, a secular country means there is no one God, which is a stated religion of the country. All can. So secular is a good word. Secularism is not a good thing. Secularism means, therefore, there is no God. 
Therefore, in the East, when I say East, I don't mean, I don't mean Malaysia, Singapore, I mean in the Eastern Bloc countries, Russia and all that, communism was a mode because we don't believe. I mean, there's no problem. You and I, we are the boss, we are the solutions, we are the power, we have to do it. Communism. The atheist. You know how they define a dead atheist? He's all dressed up and nowhere to go. In a dead atheist in the coffin, what do you say? He's all dressed up and nowhere to go. So he doesn't believe in heaven. So where will he go dressed up? Now that's it. Understood? Okay. So the media, secularism is one thing. Humanism. Uh, in humanism, we don't need God. There is no divine person. We, the solution is with us. So gradually, we are getting cooked with these ideas. Or way we think, the way we act, the way we behave, the way we conduct ourselves. will reflect these thoughts. And like that, balance these roots have gone right down. Those roots have taken care of each other for mind, all this and that and all those type of things. Okay? So like this, there are many other things which are there. So I said the first thing is, the flesh. Flesh means human nature. Second thing what I said is, the world. And the third is our good friend, Satan. Okay? Now Satan, if I would tempt you, let's say I want to, uh, I know that you have a weakness for alcohol. And I, let's say come and give me alcohol. Will you come with me? No. No. We don't come. But if I say, hey, can you come to my house, you know, my father's uh, uh, 100th birthday and he likes you so much, he wanted you to come, come, please, please. Then. Not even I want him to come home and drink with me. That's what my dad wants to He wants you to have a small peg with him. And then, so Satan, uh, I think uh, Brother Savio mentioned, him. what's the nature of God? God is? Yeah. Uh, Satan has a nature, you know? <laughs> Lies. Yes. He is not only lies, he is father of lies. Who told you that? Jesus. In John chapter 4, chapter 8, verse 44. He is a father of lies. His nature told you to tell lies. That is his nature. What color is this? Blue. Green. He cannot tell the truth. That is not his nature. So he is a father of lies. And he cannot directly deal with us. So he subtly will do this, 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 this and get to us. How do we deal with Satan? If you see in the book of Genesis, you know, in the temptations of Jesus, in the book of Genesis, what am I referring to? Adam and Eve and the same. In uh, the temptations of Jesus, and wherever else you want to see, Satan only comes to you by, by first dialoguing with you. Oh, how are you? How are you this and that? See, he's happy, you can't touch him. And then once you start talking to him, that's your end. Unless you are strong with the word of God, that is your end. Kaput, finished, khalas. So we need to remind ourselves, I am not a strong person. I am a weak person. I am a sinner. I am prone to sin. So Satan, please go. But Jesus, because he is full of the word. And how does Satan come talking? Copen scripture. And so, he will come to you also. He will also put scripture to you. But you must be smart to answer that scripture. Okay. So, till that time you are smart to answer the scripture, what will you do? Do not entertain Satan. Do not get in, into any dialogue with Satan. I want to ask you, all of you, if not most of you know what a computer is, I don't know all the things, you'll have cell phones with you. Yes, well, ask me fast, this time is going to be Okay. I'm just checking you're asleep. Okay. Now, sometimes you get messages. Don't answer this number starting in 3, 7, somewhere, somewhere, and then if you turn on your whole missing one. And suppose somebody actually at that time calls you, will you pick up that number? Why? Somebody's calling you. Suppose now I tell you there's a particular um, site, site which you go to, you know, and if you do that, it's a particular virus which is there. Huh? See, let me tell you one thing, we confess, I'm a dumbo when it comes to computers, I don't know, I don't care of computers, okay? But they say this virus, and if you go to that site, your computer will crash. Will you go to that site? 
And now, can you imagine that we who are answering so eloquently here, and I praise God for your genius and your wisdom, but all this wisdom and genius flies away when we are talking about sin. Then we become very brave, then we become very shana, then we get... Then you say, okay, let's try to I know how to figure out what it crashes. I'll pick it up from the ground when it crashes. It doesn't crash that way. But still, I'll... That you don't say that time because I'm all my data here. And so, every advice, every caution is given to you for what? For your benefit about a computer or to tell you don't use a computer? Why is a caution given to you? So that you don't use a cell phone or that you can use a cell phone out of love for you, out of concern for you, isn't it? Yes? Same way, all rules that the church gives us is for our own glory. But now we have cocked ourselves up against the teaching of the church. We have cocked ourselves up, up against the teaching of the Bible. I know what to do. You don't know what to do. And that's how we can caught up with this. All the, because we see, how can I find out what are the areas I have to be careful of so that I don't get sucked into areas of sin. And say, start with the Ten Commandments. That time kind of moment. What else? Isn't it? We are fed up looking at Ten Commandments. Nothing else is bad. So something gives something better, something different. But that is the same thing because you are the same person, same life. And so today, I am going to give you a present. There are many things how to uh, check yourself. One is Ten Commandments. Okay? One is uh, a prayer, or the Bible, the Word of God will tell you, don't be angry, don't be angry. I come to all those things. But uh, just now, because of time, fact, I want to give some principles about laws. If you think you come to more categories, but I am presenting you three categories of laws. One is civil law, the state, national laws, what we have. Traffic laws, but all those uh, tax laws, criminal laws, this, that, all comes in. Civil laws, the laws of the country. One is natural laws. What is natural law? Natural laws are the laws of nature. Now suppose, when you go to a science student, when you are study, when you study and all those type of things, you know, if you are on a terrace of a 10 story building and you want to come down, will you walk out of the terrace of the building? We won't do that. Hello? Will you? No. Huh? So we'll use this Because you know when you go there, you won't be there. Huh? And will you know what happens to you? You never know what happened to you. Correct? You never know what happened to you. <laughs> That's the end of it. Natural law. The laws of electricity, the laws of magnetism, physics, and all those laws. Okay? Can you take a cracker which you buy with your money? Your cracker. Whose cracker? Your cracker. Can you take a cracker? My cracker. And I light it. And my cracker. Me, how it burns? What happened to your face? Don't want to think about it. Okay? Natural laws. The next thing is moral laws. So you come to civil laws, natural laws, moral laws. What are moral laws? Moral laws are the laws imprinted on the heart of every human being. Moral laws are laws imprinted on the heart of every being. The What type of laws are these? A quest, a, a walk towards justice, fair play. Good and bad. Naturally, we know that, no? Suppose you say uh, uh, a child, you know, with a small ice cream or a lollipop, and a big fellow comes and uh, takes a product. Will you keep it or will you tell that fellow off? Hello? <laughs> Why? What is wrong? I mean, a man wanted me to. You see an injustice there, isn't it? You see something wrong. Who told you it is wrong? It's a blame on your heart. And therefore, Never mind where you may be, whichever tribe, God for second tribe, nobody knows you. In that tribe also, if one grandfather tells a story to the grandchild, in all the stories, it will always be that good triumphs over evil. 
Never will it be that even men came and he won the battle, he played the battle, that will not be the end of the story. And they lived happily ever after, you know that, no? He lived happily, so the last time will be there. Who lived happily ever? The good people. Those are moral laws. So these are the three classes of laws. Second point, you cannot break a law without its consequences. You cannot, there's no way, till today nobody has been able to break a law. Now you know immediately, 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 you will tell me, you know, force of gravity works. But aeroplane flies and goes against the force of gravity, you're right? Yeah? This is one possible question may I have. Not a very valid question, but I'll explain that. For the aeroplane to fly, you don't define gravity. You're making use of the knowledge and building an aircraft with sufficient trust in it to be able to overcome the force of gravity. Understand? Now if you go to test and start flapping your ears and flapping your hands, will you fly? No, because you don't have the aerodynamics to do that. So definitely, definitely you will not walk off the building. There's a big difference between moral laws and natural laws. There's a huge difference and that is where sisters and brothers, you and I are getting trapped. And this is a very important point which I want to explain to you. The whole thing is in this difference. For every time you violate a law, natural or moral, there is a consequence. There is a consequence. The only difference is that when you violate a natural law, the result is at that moment. If I get a cracker or take a big cracker and keep it here, look at it, boom! My face is going to get burned or hurt very badly. It will not be if you walk up the building and you fall down and you just get up and walk away and after two weeks you are walking, something happened. What happened? No, I fell down, no two weeks back, today my bone broke. Can it happen like that? No. The damage that that time. Not so with a moral law. With a moral law, when you break it, when you violate a moral law, there is a consequence, but the consequence is much later. It doesn't happen at that time. So a smoker goes and he gets cancer, same day after one cigarette he gets cancer. They start coughing and all and they get cancer. No. That's an asthmatic no. You know, have two sweets or something in their diabetes. You know, you'll start with extra, um, uh, what, salted, kaiju uh, nuts or whatever, and you start getting hypertension. No, 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 that's not. But it is later on. And therefore, all this lifestyle that we have adopted of promiscuity, going for natural, scantily dressed and this, that and all that type of thing, have ended up in us taking us far away because we did not see the consequences of that sin. Are you with me? Are you understand? But later on, when we have already cooked, now we see the difference and we say, now pulling back, this can be done, but with grave, uh, what shall I say? A grave uh, cost to us. And sisters and brothers, today all I want to tell you is sin and its consequences. There is a way it seems right, Proverbs 14 12, but its end is a way of death. And so many of us and all of us have done our own set of foolish things. But praise be to God if it still turn back today also. And the best example of turning back is the, the good thief. On the cross. Jesus, So we have shown that that was from the heaven. Because Jesus told them there, promise him, just you, you will be with me in paradise. So I told you about the, we have uh, temptations coming from three different ways the flesh, Satan, and the. Uh, uh, Satan and the okay, yeah. So I'll give, you, I'll give you this principle now. We go to the Ten Commandments. How do we, what are the barometer, what are the checkpoints we can use on the Ten Commandments? One of the biggest sins we have, and we don't think it's sin, is against the First Commandment. I am the Lord your God, you will not have strange gods before me. You know, the Bible is very explicit, very clear. Today, the other day, the, near my place where I live, is people about horses. You know, which they use for a tonga rides and all. 
and the Catholic has taken some bowl of water, taking this and this and this for a horse. You know, so some ritual is there, and somebody is very sick. All Catholics, Catholics doing that. Then they give him coconut, and a coconut, and a no, 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 no. Lots of these superstitious things and all, and all these are areas which we can now fail. Uh, you know, dish, dish, you know? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, even, even. Uh, this. Hmm? So, I know somebody, then meaning good Catholic family, good Catholic family. You know, when a child is wanting to go to church, and when they come back from this after baptism, then before they enter down, all that thing. So, so, why are you doing this thing? Hmm? This dish. But this is evil. No, no, but my granny is a Hail Mary. So if I bring a knife and poke you, I love 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 you. It doesn't become okay. Hello? So this is how we are doing the amulets. Huh? All the tabis and this and that. Oh, this is sin against the first commandment. Please throw it out from your house. How many times are Catholic homes, even in this parish? My sacred heart picture and all that thing behind and beside all. We are doing it, we are doing it. Our people are there, very much. One day I went to a family and I wanted to pray over them. And I just entered and somebody else had come also to pray there. No family. He said, nothing happened in his house. I said, why? Nothing happened. So, they said, no, they are praying, what they are praying? Look at these big statues. So, it's a big statue of Mother Mary. So I thought this man must have left the church and she doesn't uh, like that. So, so I said, uh, what happened? You don't uh, believe in Mother Mary can do it. And then you see, you open a bank to got a rosary. I said, what's your problem? Why nothing will happen to someone? Why? Just see, see, go see. So I went to see, you know, behind the Mother Mary statue, there was one bottle. Bottle. Don't ask me how it is, but I saw it. In the shape of a empathy. In the shape of a with a cap on the top. They fill that with water and then every day they make this sort drink that water. In the empathy game. But we are going with these things, sister brothers. We are doing this. And then we come to church and with God going to bless us. Unless we clean ourselves out from all these things. So several ways, several things I can tell you about this. The Ten Commandments is one, I mean, superstition, other gods worshipping, other things. The Fourth Commandment, honor your father and mother. Please, don't be, because this is a commandment and a promise. Youth, which is there, even those who are married, if your parents are alive, they are, oh, that's what you cry, oh. They are your parents too. Please serve them, because there's a blessing attached to you. Remember, tomorrow you also will be old and you'll expect others to look after you. But this is a command from God. Okay. There are so many other things. The word of God. Read the Bible. Catholics never read the Bible. I'm sure here the things have been changing over the years. If you read Matthew chapter 5, it cautions you about anger, lust, forgiveness, unforgiveness. It cautions you about that. You can pray those verses and you will see how you will be blessed. Uh, in Luke, I, I like something when I was doing a study of the Bible, I came across one chapter which teaches you how to handle wealth. How to handle wealth. Huh? So, today is not Bible study. But, can you imagine how to handle your wealth? It's given in the Bible. And today there are oak, oak men, you know? Oak men, you know? These are these uh, gurus, management gurus and, um, uh, you know, guys who are motivational experts. Most of them, if not all of them, are borrowing principles from the Bible. And then the lover said, I want Michi Masala, I said, no, no, best seller. When somebody asked me, you know, we are not going to a good book, I said, you're the best seller. Till today is the best seller. Which one I said, Bible. Huh. So we don't want to read it. Bible till today is the best seller. It's the best seller, till today. Okay. So that is it. Then um, uh, prayer. You pray. If you sincerely pray, God will open your eyes, He will show you things. If you sincerely, you know, the cross. If you sincerely pray. Okay. Once I remember, I had uh, fought with my parish priest and uh, I was really angry with him and I justified the reason why I was angry with him. But afterwards, a few months in prayer, then I said, no, I must want to reconcile. After all, he is my parish priest. But I have to go to him and tell him. So I prayed in men. 
And now you take appointment and all that thing. Then there are some standing outside on this balcony. So I walk and I say, oh, I'm coming there. Hey, man. I said, I don't know. I just want to go and see something happen. And I was, I knew you had said something. So, ah, it's okay. I said, it's okay. But reconciliation. It's so easy. If you pray, God will send his angels before them. It was not an embarrassing situation. I was feeling, no, no, no. But it's not an embarrassing situation at all. So likewise, uh, there are so many other ways. The Holy Spirit himself will tell you what to do and all those types of things. So, with a limited time that I have for now, 20 minutes. Okay. Oh, okay, good. I was trying to bargain with you. How much discount do I have? I'll take you to quickly run to a story that you all know. Okay? I live in, I live in Eve in the garden and the serpent coming. Okay? So the story is over, they come and they discuss everything and leave. Is the happen. Yes? You know the story? Yes. Okay. Then God comes, chapter 3, verse 8. And the minute they hear him coming, so they have run. They wanted hidden themselves. Why? Because they were naked. But who told you were naked? Who told you you were naked? Did Jesus say anything? He didn't say anything to them. They walked in this present He died alone to them. He spoke with them in the cool of the evening, the Bible says. In the cool of the evening. He fellowshiped with them. He spoke to them. And they were happy. Now this fellow comes. Finished. Oh, everything is gone. They hid him. She says, why do you hide? We were afraid. Afraid of whom? Afraid of whom? But you know how sin expands? First, they hid. Then, fear comes in. And then, the last we know, because you have done one slip, out you go. Out you go. And so, Eve is condemned. Ever since that in childbirth, blah, 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 all those things. Man is condemned. By the sweat of your brow, you are going to run. And Eve added mankind is condemned. Dust you up, you dust each other. Get up. So this is it. But again, I said, I'm going to damn your spirit. But praise be to God. In Jesus Christ, all of us have a hope. And so, therefore, I think Sabia spoke to you about the prodigal son in chapter 15. You know, no matter whatever you do, if you turn to the Lord, in the secret of heaven, come to church, you don't have to impress anybody. In the secret of your heart, you say, Lord, I did this. I am sorry. He will definitely, 100% come back to you. Okay? There is no, maybe, I think, I will see, check him out, nothing. 100% he will come to you. Okay? So, Spiritual death, there's a couple of other verses. See, there are lots of scripture verses. I decided not to give you only all the scripture verses. Because what is important is there's a change in heart, that is important. Okay? So if you respond, knowing a whole lot of scripture verses is not going to you have to you we have been dialoguing with Satan all along, let's dialogue with God for a change. Hallelujah. So how do we die? We just come to the Lord and ask him to bless us. I will quickly help. The consequences of sin. Okay? So what I said is, I told you about chapter 3 of Genesis. I explained to you how we um, uh, hide, we are afraid. The ah, important thing. Eve blamed the serpent. He gave me. You got to know, okay, it's not your fault. And she gave me that. You know? So everybody will blame the other person. Blaming is another thing which happened. Spiritual death. They lost paradise for all that spirit that means separation from God. Romans 6 23. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. Okay? So I'm not aware of that. Hardness of heart. When you sin and you become a habitual offender, hardness of heart. Okay? I remember I said I come to the bazaar area, no? So I'll tell you one person, they would call him minister. Minister is a cold word because we didn't want to 
when we talk in the family, we didn't want others to know we're talking about it. This person, young, handsome fellow, seven years vigorous imprisonment in Yerola. You know Yerola? Puna. All hardened criminals were there. Seven years. But periodically, after the third or fourth year, once a year, for about one or two days, they would send him home. And when he reached home, he had to report in the morning and evening at Bandar Police Station. Or the two or three times that he came home, not once also did he stay two days. The first day only, the cops are coming, mm -hmm. catch him and put him back in here. And the one time I remember, he had come and he had gone for a little barber for a shave. He had gone for a shave and had a nice one. Something happened. I don't know what. He took that uh, Vastara Vastara, what did he say? Vastara The razor. The razor. And he took, cut the barber. Hadin criminal. Hadin criminal. You see, so we may not be taking around the razors going all over the place, but you have other weaknesses which are equally bad. Okay? So let us, let us not be those hardened criminals. Another area of hardness of heart. Very important, as I said, we blame God for everything. So many of our sicknesses and illnesses are because of sin. Unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, you know, so many of our ancillary problems are because of rooted. Let me just give a caution. Not all these things are because of sin. Some are genuine medical problems. Genuine medical problems. But all of those who have undergone abortions in the youth, okay? Later on in their 40s and 50s and 60s, most of them are under um, psychophobic drugs. All of those, and I'm addressing this to the ladies, all of those with uh, concept pills, you know how much damage a person can body? Yeah, I mean, these are all separate topics which need to be taken. Because your fertility, your fertility, fertility is a gift from God. And what are we doing? We are treating our fertility like a disease taking steroids. Is it going to bless us? No way, no way, no way. We are only fooling ourselves, getting pakka water. Stay in my hot water. So please, there are, but in as much as um, one from this 10 verse 20 says, in as much as God tells you, He also gives you the grace to get out of that situation. That's why He said, come for confession, go for counseling. There are so many other ways to handle these things. But no, we walk in the dark and counsel. All of us can offer, and each one Buddhist explainer, Muslim, Muslim explainer, Hindu, what will they give you? Will they give you any biblical principles? Will they tell you something good? They'll tell you a way of death. There is a way that seems right. This way is there. Okay? So that is it. And sin opens the door for Satan. So many of the cancers, cancers, are because of occult practices. <laughs> Hello, are you listening? Yes. So many of the cancers are because of occult practices. Either you are dabbled in it, or in your family, or whatever. You have to depend of all these things. Okay? Let me, joint pains, arthritic pains. That's why when you go for a retreat, and we have a retreat once a month at Vinalaya, the uh, event will be able to explain. Go for the retreat, the retreat, you know, holy, 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 pray, 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 it's not that. It's a series of talks which opens your eyes to see how much you have been cooked in that, with the frogs. Okay? So, that's it. Miss Five is telling me, huh? Five minutes, it's time up. Close up, everything. Oh my goodness. So, gross nature, love, I've, I've covered everything. Moral law, natural law, and let us pray. Pray one minute. Just close our eyes and uh, keep our hands before us as we surrender ourselves. And we go back to that beautiful time in the Garden of Eden. And that's not Adam and Eve there, but think of you there. And we have sinned. And when God comes, He asks Adam and Eve three questions. Where are you? And when they heard Him coming on it, they hid. He said, we hid. Why did you? Where are you? Who told you? Was the second question God asked Adam and Eve. Who told you that you are naked? Who told you? And who told them? Satan. See how we have gone astray. 
And the third question, God asked Adam and Eve, What have you done? In one shot, all of paradise was lost. Because they yielded to the counsel of Satan. Today also, we have a free choice. We can turn to God, or we can continue in our way. The choice is yours. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for each and every person who has come here, Lord. No matter the reason or why or how they have come here, but they have come here it's because of your grace. And I pray, Father, to the power of the Holy Spirit, that you answer the aspirations and the cry of every heart here, Lord. Give them for today the calmness of your spirit. Let them experience your love, which we heard in that first talk. Let them hear, hear that thing resounding in their hearts. And tonight when they sleep, we ask you to give them a good night rest. Father, in Jesus' name we make this prayer. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, to get all of us. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst the women. And blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand for bringing Brother Mona with us to share this wonderful talk with us and so he kept us in all of your life and alive. But it's now about 12, 25, we uh, 35, sorry. We have a break for lunch. Lunch, we come back at 1.15. So, lunch will be on my left in the Mother Teresa Hall. Please stand, I will unkindly stand. How do you unkindly stand? Can you unkindly stand? No. So we have to pay attention. Okay, my name is. Let's say our grace. Okay. Let's again sign ourselves in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen.